Now that I've been mostly based in northern Sweden for a few years, I'm used to the coldest, darkest days of winter. Minus 15 Celsius doesn't feel too cold anymore. I love winter. The low light is stunning. Endless golden hour, and I love how the landscape is delicately lined in white. Although most of the northern hemisphere is welcoming back spring, we won't say goodbye to the snow for at least a month. The animals that live here are well adapted for life in the cold. But when we recently experienced the coldest day of the year, with several days around minus 37 Celsius, I saw how harsh these extreme conditions can be. But how do we cope in our little house in northern Sweden? Good morning, it is six o'clock and today I'm going to the Eagle Hide with Connie and excitingly it's probably going to be the coldest day of this winter and right now it's minus 32 and it might go down to minus 40. I need to pack my camera bag and I'm going to take a flask of coffee Extreme conditions are always exciting to photograph in. It's not common for the temperature to drop below minus 35 Celsius. Ooh. Connie picked me up and we made the short walk to the hide. We arrive before sunrise, so the animals don't see us arriving. The reason I first came to Sweden four years ago was to photograph golden eagles with Swedish photographer Connie Lundström. Connie ended up being a great friend and now my neighbour and soon we will be announcing an expedition to Svalbard to photograph polar bears next year. It was incredible and quite sad to see how the birds were reacting to the extreme temperatures. The temperature dropped to minus 37 Celsius by the mid-morning. The birds were puffed up, insulating air between their feathers to maintain any warmth. But they were making slow, shallow breaths and they were really struggling with the cold. I was surprised that the hide was so quiet it seemed that most of the birds were sitting still or trying to get any warmth from the sun. The hide isn't insulated and there's just spruce tree trunks between the inside where we're sitting and the cold. But a log burner keeps us warm. We were waiting for golden eagles, but only at the very last light did they arrive. First this male that had ice covered around his eyes. And then this majestic female arrived, completely covered in frost. She looked like an eagle ghost. I am genuinely exhausted <laughs> i'm so tired <laughs> so the coldest we had at the hide was minus 37 and it did feel quite cold the crazy thing that happened when we left the hide is that connie went to his car and it didn't start <laughs> i thought we would have to walk back and it's an hour walk um, and in the end our neighbor Anders saved the day and collected us. But we were walking outside for maybe 20 minutes, maybe a bit more, and the tip of my nose started to hurt a little bit. And by the time we got into the house, 
I had a red circle on my nose. It was almost like I had sunburn, but it was like a cold burn. Really fun day at the Hyde. The light was amazing, super wintry, and she was just covered in frost. And Connie kept saying that it was once in 30 years you get these kind of photos. So he was very excited. I always find it quite awkward to um, vlog in front of other people, but it was very fun, very cool to go back to the hide. I think tomorrow we're gonna go for a walk, Juan and I, see what we can find, maybe some squirrels. I think I'm going to make a tea and just go to bed. I'm super tired. <laughs> I used to struggle with the darkness of winter, but this year has actually been really easy. I think traveling a bit has helped and having some exposure to strong sunlight. In the past, I've been so tired and by the early afternoon, I just need a nap. <laughs> but now I'm happy to live life a bit slower and if I need a nap, it's fine. Although we live in a very remote, small village, an hour away from town, we still have central heating and electricity. We make fires to give the heating a boost, especially when it's around minus 35. It's been minus 20 for around six days now and we've not managed to start the car so we haven't driven it in over a week and we can charge up the battery and maybe start it. Fortunately, we do have a shop in the village so we've managed to get bread and milk. So we've been fine, but it's also been tricky to keep the house warm. Usually the house is relatively toasty but it's been cold and I've made a fire and we've been making fires daily. The houses are designed for this kind of weather so they are very well insulated and they don't lose heat that easily but it's still been cold and we've been making fires. I hadn't seen a squirrel in three days due to the cold temperatures. I've previously read that in extremely cold temperatures, red squirrels will sleep through the coldest days. Even in minus 30 Celsius, I've seen red squirrels active, but recently they've been very quiet. I wanted to see if I could spot any signs of them. And then I found something very unexpected. This is wild. We've just found a dead roe deer and I think it didn't survive the minus 37 days when it was extremely cold because this is a natural death. Um, there's no way this is someone shot it. This is definitely a roe deer that has died. The animals have only just started opening it up. So I think this is a bit of a change of plan for this evening. I'm gonna set up a camera and maybe leave it for up to a week because so many animals will feed off this carcass. I feel weird, like I'm excited by the idea of setting up a camera trap, but I'm also quite saddened because we have the roe deer in the garden, we feed them, um, but obviously this is nature, this is, this is, I don't, it's crazy. From a quick observation, there doesn't seem to be any fox tracks, so I think this is currently just jays, magpies, maybe the goshawk that's feeding on this carcass. Um, there's a lot of fur that's being ripped out and that's quite... I think that's a goshawk. I, I think maybe a magpie or a jay could do that. Maybe not a jay, I'm not sure. But a goshawk would definitely have the strength to just pull out skin and fur. I went home to prepare my camera trap and returned a couple of hours later. I set up a motion sensor 
that will be triggered by any movement. I set up my camera overnight and in the morning I was able to photograph a woodpecker and jay. Unfortunately, the trees in the woodland were going to be cut down and I had to move my camera. However, Connie and I spoke to the landowner and he wanted the roe deer moved, so Connie actually relocated it to the Golden Eagle hide. Something I love about the natural world is its seemingly perfect equilibrium. Nothing is wasted in the natural world. What is lost is transferred back to the system, a harmonious movement of energy. Sadly, we've interrupted many perfectly functioning ecosystems. By removing predators like wolves, we then have too many herbivores, which in turn leads to too much grazing and less wildflowers and less tree saplings. Allowing nature to get back to its natural equilibrium is so critical and has done wonders in many places like Yellowstone, where wolves were reintroduced. The roe deer died due to the extreme temperatures, but now the fittest animals that survived the cold are making good use of this free meal. And what is left will decay in the soil the following spring. I'm lucky that I can escape the piercingly cold temperatures. And although it could seem quite extreme to many that we live four hours south of the Arctic Circle, where we have six months of snow, we do live in a well-insulated house with central heating and a wood stove. It's been snowing pretty much all day and it just looks absolutely magical again. Some of you have asked me how you can help more with nature. There's the obvious things or the things that people always tell you to do, like recycle, go on a beach clean or walk instead of drive. You can volunteer, which has a great impact, but sometimes you just don't have access to volunteer groups or you don't have the time and to be honest one of the best things I think you can do is spread the love for nature and just get more people to love the natural world but I want to share a really easy way you can get involved and have individual impact. Planet Wild are connecting nature protection projects around the world that need funding on the Planet Wild online community. In their latest video, they're helping to restore ancient Caledonian pine forest by creating space, light, and nutrients for diverse species. Each month, Planet Wild selects a new partner and they make a short film about the work they do. There's already 13,000 members and it means a lot of people can work together to make a difference. On the Planet Wild app, you can actually vote for which projects you want to support. For as little as six dollars a month you can join the planet wild community and excitingly planet wild is offering me to give out 200 free memberships if you'd like to get involved head to the link in the description or scan the qr code watch the new video and remember you could be one of those 200 people who can get a free membership it's minus 17 and my hands are getting a bit red so i'm gonna go inside now <laughs>